star defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. What, what do you do for your bye week? What do you do when you get a few days off? Um, had a little family Halloween party, had a little team Halloween party, and then I took my ass to Florida, played some golf, uh, chilled out by the beach, and um, it was amazing. Okay, so who does Aiden Hutchinson dress up as for Halloween? Um, I was Victor Van Dorse. And my girlfriend was the corpse bride from the from the Tim Burton um, movie, probably like twenty years ago now. That so. is very specific and impressive. <laughs> like you know, I try to be a little unique. You know, what's the best one you've ever done? What's your favorite? One of my favorites when I was younger, I was Edward Scissorhands, um, and you know, dyed my hair black, had wires on my face, had the had the scissors for the hands that was a fun one that was the joker one year um my family is very creative and we like to go all out for things that's pretty good that's pretty good now since we're in the neighborhood of halloween and i was gonna ask you this anyway are you one of the guys that like has to constantly eat to keep his weight on so you can eat whatever the hell you want or do you have to actually watch what you what you put in your body yeah i'm uh i would say a little bit of both in terms of I do need to eat a lot, but I also um, am, am a healthy person. I like to be healthy, so I uh, I need to watch what I eat. Uh, I'm not like smashing cheeseburgers and stuff like that. So, but you know, if I don't eat enough meals every day, I will start to lose weight, and I'm I'm staying on top of things this season because I did start I did lose a little bit of weight last year. How many calories per day? I, I'm not a calorie counter. I probably I probably eat about you know four hefty meals a day. What do you do? Do you get on the scale to know you're losing weight? Do you weigh yourself? Do your clothes just start, you know, the pants, game pants, <laughs> loose in the back end? How do you know that you're not keeping the weight on? Just, our, I mean, we, they make us weigh in every every now and then uh, for the team. So that's how I know. That's what, those are my little indicators. I don't weigh myself every morning, but sometimes when I feel a little light, you know, I know. Is there a food you really would like to eat all the time if you could that isn't healthy? Oh my god, dude! Um, what like I would eat pizza for every meal, every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. Pizza, I could, pizza. I could. I mean, I, I mean, one of my favorites, and I'm not sponsored by them. None of that. Five Guys Burgers. I'm a big Five Guys Burgers guy. That's a free shout out for Five Guys. But if there was one cheat meal that I would have in this moment, it would be that. One thing I noticed watching some of your highlights, you had an interception earlier, and it's the first time I saw it. Are you not wearing gloves this year? You know, I like to switch things up. You know, variety is the spice of life. So a um, couple games, I decided not to wear gloves this year. And on one of those, it happened to be the one I got the interception. But I thought the gloves had – I thought I didn't think it was a fashion statement, Edward Scissorhands. I thought the gloves had – I thought the gloves had purpose. I thought they had meaning. I thought they, like, made it easier to do your job. You know, they did, and then I was in practice one week, and I, I was wearing gloves, and everyone was all sweaty, and I couldn't grab anything because the gloves, once they get wet, I mean, you're done, you know? So um, that's why I kind of stopped wearing them. Now that it's getting colder, I do wear the gloves because, you know, you don't – you're you know, people, guys aren't that sweaty out there on the field, but I feel like there's a grip component, you know, when it is all – when everyone's all wet and, you know, you can't really grab any any jersey. I feel like that's that's why I did it. You grew up in Michigan where it gets cold. It's fun to go out and play football or anything in the cold. Do you wish you weren't playing in a dome? As much as I do love the cold, I love that dome. I love that dome when it is zero degrees outside, um, you know, just because, um, man, it's just – it's nice to have to have room temperature in that dome. And that's, that's, that's all there is to it. You know, I just – I – as 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 much as I like to call myself a Viking and, and love the love the cold outdoors and the cold plunges and this and that, um, I don't mind our dome, man. I don't mind it in, in January. <laughs> I know you're not allowed to peek ahead at the schedule, that it's all one game at a time. We're only focused on the next opponent and yada, yada. But I'm allowed to look at your schedule. I looked at your schedule and I see the potential for the one seed for the Detroit Lions, which would mean 
home games, obviously, in the postseason, as long as you keep advancing. Is that a goal that you guys have? Do you talk about it? Do you think about it? Do you understand, obviously, the fundamental difference between playing a playoff game at home versus on the road? Of course. Of course. That's the goal, man. I mean, we don't, uh, you know, we're not naive. I think um, we do take it one game at a time, but it's, it's man, we're, we're in this thing thinking about the the big picture. You know, that's that's how you go through week to week. You, th- you you have that big picture in mind. And, you know, one of those small steps to get to that big picture is winning the NFC. And um, that's our goal, man. And, and we're going to do whatever it takes to get it. Who designed your logo? That's that's because most player logos aren't very impressive. It looks like something that, you know, it just need a little more work. <laughs> this is awesome. Who designed that? Um, you know, I, I'm not even sure who designed it. It was, it was, it was back, um, in like 2021 when we designed this thing, it's but it great. ended up, it's got the it goalposts. Being, I don't know if that yeah, was intentional. It's, actually, it's awesome. People, people thought it was goalposts, but it's more with the, it's more, uh, 11, 11 as the, the two things. And that's always been a big, um, kind of number in our family with the ones. And it's a very spiritual, uh, thing in our family. And it's, it's led to a lot of different synchronicities. So, um, people do think it's goalposts, which it actually does look like it too. So it kind of it kind of works with that as well. It looks great. And 11-11 is important because 11-11 is November 11 is Veterans Day. And you've got something going on with USAA. <laughs> Explain to us what what's all happening there. I teed you up really good for that one. That's good. That no, was good. <laughs> um, yeah. So this Veterans Day, I'm partnering with USAA, uh, encouraging Americans to go beyond thanks uh, in order to honor our veterans really just by having deeper conversations. Um, you know, you can go to usaa.com slash Veterans Day to see more resources. And actually on my Instagram, I just posted a video of me and former Air Force veteran Patrick Fitzhugh, uh, really just discussing his time in the military and seeing what else we can do to give beyond thanks. And and I, I saw in the materials that USAA sent to us that a survey shows that Half of veterans are uncomfortable or awkward when they hear thanks for your service. And that's, you know, I'd never really thought of that. I just assumed it's something that they all like to hear. Do you, uh, what, what should we say and what should we do to express appreciation when we encounter someone out in public who is either in the military or we know that they used to be in the military? Yeah, no doubt. In, in my conversation with Patrick, um, he was telling me, that, you know, while it's great to to give thanks, he thinks he was telling me that it's important for Americans to, you know, actively participate in in, in a, a lot of these different organizations that involve veterans and um, and that ultimately kind of raises more awareness. And um, rather than just by saying a few words that that helps to um, kind of commemorate and and to celebrate uh, someone more than just a few words. Well, it's a great cause, and it's great that you're part of it. USAA.com slash Veterans Day. Uh, more information that folks can get there, and we encourage people to do so. One more for you before we wrap. That that Ravens game, like, have you made sense? Have you processed what happened that day? Is that just kind of like shit happens? You're not going to go 17-0. and There's just going to be days that it starts and it doesn't stop, and the game's over, and you just chalk it up and you move on. How do you How do you – work through that and move forward after an outcome like that. Yeah. I mean, that game is still just a, a, a tough pill to swallow right there. And I think, you know, they just caught us on a bad day and, you know, not, not taking away any of their success that they had against us. I mean, they, they dominated that game, but I feel like in this league, man, you play top, top level competition um, every single week. And, and if you aren't at that level, if you aren't, if your awareness, your execution, you're not at that level of your opponent or better than them, it's it's tough to win that game. And, um, you know, that one that one still still hurts a little bit. But, um, you know, playoffs are still alive. Everything's still not that number one seed is still alive. And that's what we're going for. Well, yeah, it's not like college where one game can just end the whole thing. But I'm curious as a team leader, like, was there anything that when you think back on it, like you maybe saw what was coming and maybe we could do something differently or these are the signs I need to be on the lookout for before we end up in an outcome like that. I mean, is there anything that's kind of like sparked for you that maybe I could make a difference and 
say something, do something, make something happen here before we step into that bear trap again. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, if we played them again in the, I mean, I guess they're in the AFC. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, you never really know, but I feel like it was one of those games that it got out of hand early. And, you know, we had a lot of, they had a lot of big explosive explosives against us early and that, that hurts, man. And, and, you know, we're not, we weren't playing good complimentary football. And I didn't really think that there's not a whole lot to say in those situations. Um, you know, you can do all the hooting and hollering you want to do on that sideline, but if all 11 guys are not on the same page and if all 11 guys aren't executed at a high level, man, it's, it's hard to win the league. So it takes everybody. I keep saying last one, last one. This is the last one, and I promise, because I know you got to go. You got limited time, and I appreciate your time very much. I mentioned college. You went to Michigan. Do you have anything that you want to say? Anything, any comment, any thought about whatever it is that's going on right now with Michigan? Um, I think they got a shot to win the national championship, if that's what you're asking me. No, no, that's not what I'm asking. Oh, sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm asking about the controversy that's kind of engulfed the program the past three weeks. Oh, Any thoughts about okay. that? Sign stealing and advanced scouting. Did, did you know this guy, Connor Stallions, when you were there? Right. Okay. I thought, yeah, I thought you were talking about the No, boys. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I touched um, the third rail. No, I uh, – connection's going bad. <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of talk of the sign stealing, but I think there's a lot of things in college football, you know, you can you can change like I mean it's hard to read signs in college football when you got three dudes doing signs. There's a lot of ways to hide signs. You change signs. When I was at Michigan, I didn't get any indication of run or pass or anything like that. So um, I don't know, man. I don't. I I, I, have, I have no comment. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, you had a little bit of a comment there, and I'm so I'm, I'm surprised that you really weren't like I kind of you know I mean. That's good. You've been focused on your bye week. You've been focused on your Halloween costume. You've been focused on drinking your water. You've been focused on playing golf. You're focused on the Lions. That's your life now. All right, Aiden, I appreciate it. I can keep going uh, for a long time with you, but you got other things to do, and you probably don't want to talk to me anymore. So we will say thank you. Congratulations on everything that's gone well for you this year. Keep it up, and uh, kudos for your work with USAA. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.